coming up next on the Independent Film Channel. M.D. Geist, Most Dangerous Soldier. One of my favorite animes. Well, not quite favorite. That's reserved for the gyro-bike masterpiece that is Venus Wars. But M.D. Geist is one of my guilty pleasure films. Not because it's good, but because the concept is interesting and relatively unique. If you look at the story any deeper than surface level, it really starts to fall apart in a lot of places. The characters are extremely one-note and very limited. Their motivations make almost no sense at times. Even the lead character is incredibly flat and limited in depth, and I absolutely love it. When I say this, I'm just talking about the animated film, and not the printed content associated with it as well. One day I might check that out, but probably not today. And uh, uh, moving on, uh, MD Geist has a unique place as your casual anime viewer or deep-seated weeb, because you probably know the character's unique look. As Geist was the main logo for US Manga Corps from 1992 till about 2009. So whether or not you've seen the anime or the manga, You've probably seen the character in some capacity. What makes the MD guy story so interesting is that the main character only exists to fight. And upon reading that out loud from the script, I realized that's just about every other offshoot super soldier manga or anime ever created. Um, but yeah, moving back to the, the point here. Uh, his sole desire in life is to fight, basically. He's a genetically modified soldier who was built by the regular army to combat the Nexstrom army, who were rebels fighting against Earth's central control. The problem was Geist worked too well, and like the base story in Jacob's Ladder, he would eventually fight his allies just to meet his own cardinal desire to fight and kill. What's so great about the anime was the first time I watched it was around 1996 on the Independent Film Channel. So to a teenage me, this anime was awesome. Post-apocalyptic, sci-fi, mecha soldier, super soldiers, wasteland, leather cops. I digress. The concept of two rival forces fighting for such a point to where the entire planet is completely broken and civilization is basically collapsing. Most of the population is dead due to the ongoing war, and the only limited forces that are there are left struggling to finish the fight with what they have left. But the twist is that the regular army built a death force to finish the job of the war, but only decided to build an army of murder machines just to, you know, kill everything, and or anything biological. Which honestly, the whole thing just raises way more questions about the regular army's war strategy. Because ultimately, the death forces were triggered after the death of the regular army leaders. So the remaining forces of the regular army are fighting against time to shut down the death forces before they are released against the entire world of Jera. So the army, instead of building conventional weapons to wipe out the Nexstrom army, built an absolutely massive force of murder robots instead. Which I guess explains why the regular army appears to be losing on every front, despite having what appears to be subjectively the best power armor or military equipment. Also, they created MD Geist, who they left in a satellite in orbit, instead of just dropping him somewhere deep within the Nexstrom territory. So what I love about this movie is just that some of the details are absolutely pointless. For example, this great opening shot, showing a lone aircraft on patrol looking for an enemy that seems to have been all but destroyed. But wait for it. Our boy MD Geist grapples onto the ship and does this sweet swing around the cockpit and absolutely lays place to the aircraft. But wait for it. He has a bullet in his head. Why? Only for him to then peel off the bullet hole. Because it was fake. There is absolutely no reason for that, because it's clear the aircraft didn't spot him. So he was playing dead on the ground with a bullet hole in his head. So MD guys just laid out in the middle of a giant field of dead bodies under a flight path of an aircraft just to swing over it and blow it up. But he had to pretend to be dead. Despite the aircraft clearly not being able to spot him at any point, so I guess he was just banking on them looking at him through a thermal scope or not having a thermal scope or something like that and be like, oh, wait, wait, no, no, man. Uh, we're good. That body has a, a you know, bullet hole in the head. I mean, because, you know, it makes absolutely no sense. And it's just the little details like that that make me absolutely love this silly, violent movie. So after this, we're going to go into major spoiler territories for the film MD Geist. But if you really want to watch it, it's only about 45 minutes long. It's free available on YouTube. Check it out. It's a fun little romp through the 1980s. So you've been warned. It's spoiler country up ahead. So after that opening, we're introduced to a runaway army soldier who is cornered by a gang of BDSM cops in a blown out city. Which I'm pretty sure, based on when this film was being made in the 1980s, that was a legal requirement, at least for screen time. But that introduces us to the power armor, which is a pretty sweet concept in the film. It also gives us visual clues as to when the armor is activated. 
just kind of a fun little nod to later things that would happen in shots. Which for action shots, it looks pretty great. Uh, but there isn't much to this opening aside from establishing that these are people attacking an army soldier and they're an independent gang. Of course, Mr. MD Geist shows up and kills their leader. And the gang decides to follow him out of fear of dying, even though he uh, had stated he has no interest in them, or even cares if they live or die. So it really paints a grim picture that these people will follow him, even though he doesn't have their best interests at heart. Which, despite how outwardly shallow this film is, there are some deeper concepts kind of looming around. Just how incredibly dark this world has become, with the war causing people to become gangs roaming around cities hunting other humans. But something else that makes MD Guys great is that the total runtime is only about 45 minutes. So there isn't much wasted time. It gets to different points pretty quickly. Granted, not well at times. But it doesn't really drag. So we're quickly shown the regular army is fighting the Nexrum forces with a tank the size of a battleship. Which in itself is a pretty neat concept. It shows the Nexrum trashing the battleship because they're swarming it with their smaller mech suits. The Nexrum are winning the fight until MD Guys shows up. You know, he's cleaned up a bit, but he's also riding a gun bike and starts to help the regular army under the guise that they pay more. Which honestly, in this uh, post-apocalyptic world, what, what would the money even do? Because it's pretty much destroyed everywhere. Friend do. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. But ultimately, you've got to have a fun battle that shows us quite a bit of the graphic violence that has made MD guys so iconic, historic. I mean, most people don't even know about it, but ultimately that's kind of what put it on the map was the grotesque violence. So you see a mech get, like, you know, sucked under a tread. Looks pretty great. You see a guy's face get crushed by MD Geist. So it's revealed after the battle that the regular army is on a mission to save the world from their own bad decision. Basically, the army's government put a dead man switch on one of their leaders, and once he died, it triggered the death force, a weapon meant to wipe out all biological life on Jera. All biological life. Can you imagine the DOD video pitching the idea of the death force? The regular army today released information on how they intend to defeat the next from threat. It involves releasing killer robots that kill everyone. So that way, if we lose, no one wins. But basically, the army only has a limited amount of time to stop the death force before it's unleashed. So they're in a race against time to attack the brain complex and put the machines down. So, they're all that's left of the regular army that's fighting to save the world. I'm not sure why they didn't tell the next from army, you know, going into this at this point, because ultimately it would, you know, kill them too. But, you know, they just one of those things that's just so funny about MD Geist where they just forget parts, but yeah. So basically they have this fun build-up to the battle, with MD Geist and the Colonel we're introduced to getting into power armor. It looks pretty great, but man, do we get this wonderfully strange scene where the Colonel is trying to motivate his men. Oh boy, is it just the worst. But I love the attempt they made. What's wrong? Snap to it, men. You look like a bunch of enlisted grunts. Remember, your fight tech commandos. Stay motivated, man. You're not sure why he gave the worst motivational speech in history, but personally, having been in the military, it's not the worst one I've ever heard. So there's that going for it. I mean, at least he's trying. Oh, God, I love this movie. It's clunky, it has odd pacing, but man, does it try. And man, this killer rift. But ultimately, it's revealed after the triumphant attack into the heart of the brain complex that the Colonel knows exactly what MD Geist is. He sticks a transforming robot onto him to stall MD Geist while he goes in to deactivate the Death Force. Ultimately, Geist prevails in the fight against the machine, and the Colonel has a breakdown and then gets his face crushed by Geist, who then, after crushing the Colonel, uh, activates the Death Force in the hopes of fighting forever, because that's MD Geist's entire personality. Because ultimately, Geist is a weapon who needs an enemy and he can't do anything else. So he has no interest in peace, love, or death. His only desire is to fight forever, which an army machine bent on wiping out all biological life would certainly present him with that opportunity. The film ends on the death force being released and makes the world seem even more awful. 
So Geist is essentially an evil character that was created by the regular army to fight the Nextrum. But in the end, he acts as a force to destroy the world completely. So, he's a bad guy that you kind of root for, but that's mainly because the world is terrible, and you don't have much else to root for. So that's MD Geist in a nutshell, an anime that established itself as a hyper-violent option. And it really wasn't available too much when it initially came out, but it kind of found a second wind in the United States, as it was one of the first hyper-violent options to really hit the American market. And because of that success in the United States, that actually led to the creation of the next film, which uh, was Death Force, which is, uh, you know, a film where the world gets even worse and people are just being, you know, murdered by machines. But the animation in that one is um, dramatically better than the original, and it's even more ridiculous. But that's a review for another time. But I want to thank you guys for dropping by and watching uh, Historic Nerd today. I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, or night, or whatever it is you're doing. Bye.